Another mystery buried deep in the hills of eastern Washington keeps resurfacing. A bottomless pit said to be a pathway to the paranormal. Do you really know the truth about Mel's Hole? Nestled on Mel Waters' land in Manistash Ridge, west of Ellensburg, Washington, this abyss swallowed endless amounts of refuse, from household garbage to broken appliances, without showing any signs of filling. More than a simple pit, its mysteries deepened with animals avoiding it and unexplained radio signals emanating from its depths. In 2017, a bold team dropped a camera into its enigmatic void and the revelations shocked the world. Their discovery prompted an immediate retreat, highlighting the peril within. Join us as we reveal the incredible story of Mel's Hole. On Manistash Ridge, west of Ellensburg, Washington, Mel Waters discovered something that would pique the interest of everyone who would hear about it. On Mel's property was a large hole, seemingly a well. But don't be mistaken, because this is not a well. For a very long time, it served as a trash dump for Mel and other property owners. They would dump anything in here, ranging from regular household garbage to broken appliances and old tires. Anything that needed to be dumped was going in here, but, oddly enough, the hole never really filled up. This naturally raised Mel's curiosity, because given all the garbage that had been dumped in there, it would have been filled or close to filled. But that's not all. Some odd things started happening around the hole, and even his dog started avoiding this area. Whenever he was close by with a radio, the signals would be all over the place. But the craziest thing about this hole is that there is no apparent bottom. But what was it about this hole that was so fascinating? Over the years, you may have heard a few stories or theories circulating about Mel's Hole. Fast forward to around 2017, and a group of researchers managed to find the infamous hole and even go ahead and explore it. However, when they lowered the camera down the hole, they found something that would completely shake them up. In fact, it was so terrifying that the only option they had was to flee, because at this point, their lives were at stake. But before we can find out what was so terrifying about the whole thing, let's look at the facts. To better understand the revelations, we need to understand some more context about Mel's Hole. Mel's Hole is a circular pit that has a diameter measuring 9 feet 9 inches. It is surrounded by a stone retaining wall, which goes down for about 15 feet. That is the part that is seen, because after 15 feet, it is nothing but darkness. By the time Mel and his wife started depositing items and dumping them in the mysterious hole, they were not the first ones to do so. His neighbours actually had the habit of depositing all their trash there. Whenever Mel inquired from his neighbours about the hole, they all claimed it had been there since they arrived. However, they were all worried about the hole because, as much as they were depositing most of their dump there, the sound of objects dropping into it was not present. There were no echoes of a thud, as you would expect after dumping something in a hole. This only meant that there was no indication of a bottom. Catching the attention of Mel Waters, he became even more curious about the hole. And with that, he also became more determined to uncover the mystery of the hole. The first thing he would do is find out if it had a bottom. However, at this point, the only question that is going around is, how deep did it really go? Better yet, what was in the hole that shocked the entire world? Keep watching to find out. Since Mel was a very enthusiastic fisherman, he had lots of spools of fishing line. So, to find the bottom of the hole, he would start by lowering something. He attached a weight of one pound to the line and started lowering it. Let's just say that he was surprised as the line went further. In the end, the line descended for an insane 4,500 feet which is the full length of the reel. Even more shocking was the fact that it never seemed to hit the bottom. Even though this was a setback, Mel reeled the weight up, and when it finally got to the surface, it was completely dry, which means it never touched any water. Mel never gave up and decided to replace the weight with a roll of lifesavers on his second try. This time, he was sending it down, hoping to discover some water at the depths. But when he reeled up the lifesavers after reaching maximum length again, they were very dry. 
Mel had to go back to the drawing board and figure out how to go deeper into the hole. So, he connected spool after spool of fishing line to go further. However, even at a depth of 10,000 feet, there didn't seem to be any sign of a bottom. But he wasn't going to stop there, as he was determined to find out if the hole had a bottom. At the end of his trials, he had deployed lines about 80,000 feet, which is well over 15 miles. But even with all that, his search for answers was fruitless, as he never found the bottom of the hole. Finding the bottom proved to be completely fruitless, but in his search for answers, Mel ended up discovering something else. Whenever he approached the hole to continue his quest to find the bottom, he noticed that his dogs had completely avoided the mysterious hole. Not only that, but they would dig in their feet whenever he tried to force them to get closer to the hole. It was as though they were sensing some mysterious force emanating from the hole. Furthermore, something else that never really stood out until later was the lack of any sign of wildlife or insects in the area surrounding the hole. The only wildlife that would be spotted close to the hole were just some birds flying around. This really caught Mel's interest, and he decided to discuss it with his neighbours. When he asked them whether their dogs were showing the same behaviour near the hole, they all confirmed that to be true. It seemed that all dogs were sharing the same feeling about the hole. There was some mysterious force coming from it. However, the stories kept getting even more frightening. It seems as though the hole keeps on getting even more mysterious the more Mel looks into it. But how mysterious does it really get? Stick around to find out. As Mel and his neighbours were discussing more about the hole and the odd behaviour of their dogs, one neighbour gave one of the most chilling stories ever about the hole. The neighbour claimed that not so long ago, from the time they were having this conversation, his dog passed away. Instead of burying the dog, he decided to bid it farewell by disposing of the body in the hole. After doing that, he never really thought much about it since they were already used to dumping things in holes. However, a few days later, as he was just walking around the property, he spotted a dog running through a wooded area. It was not until he looked at it keenly that he came to learn that it was actually his dead dog, spotting it by the familiar collar. But when he tried calling out to the dog, it refused to respond. The neighbour claimed that it was as though the dog was unaware of its past life or its owner's identity. But could it be possible that it was a dog from another dimension? Let's just say this was very odd and it never sat right with the neighbour. From this, a lot of theories would emerge. One of them was that this was a dog from another dimension that looked exactly the same. But, just like we said, this was just one of the theories. Also, from this, there were multiple bizarre stories that were emerging. And with the fishing line going even deeper, Mel eventually found himself wondering more than he could understand. Let's just say that he ended up having more questions than he had answers to. Because of the intensity of this mystery, Mel needed someone else to help him understand what was going on. Since it was 1997, there was only one place that he could go to discuss the strange and otherworldly. This was on the podcast of Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell. The show was mainly broadcast from the high desert of the great American Southwest. The show would reach hundreds of stations worldwide, recording an incredible 10 million listeners. Furthermore, if anyone could shed light on Mel's situation at the time, it was Art Bell and his audience. Mel was determined to find answers about this hole. And so, on February 24, 1997, he took the bold step to send Art a message. In the message, he detailed his whole experience with the hole, from how he has sunk 80,000 feet of fishing line to how he never heard the echo of an old refrigerator that they dumped with his wife hitting the bottom. This was a very detailed message, and he made sure that he gave as many details as possible to get people interested. After sending this message, it wasn't long before Art called, and within a few hours of sharing, Mel's hole had become a worldwide sensation. And just like that, Mel would gradually be invited to several shows where he would unveil more and more details about the mysterious phenomenon. This move by Mel yielded both positive and negative results. On the positive side, Mel was able to receive some valuable advice from people all over the world who listened to him. 
Some of the suggestions included telling him to use a laser to measure the distance to the bottom. People also advised him to use radar to assess the distance. All these were solid pieces of advice, some of which he might have never thought of. But anything with a positive side has a negative side. As much as he managed to get feedback from people worldwide, now millions knew that the hole existed. This was all thanks to his radio revelations. During the show, he would drop some clues about the hole's location, and because of this simple act, his life changed forever. You see, just a day after the initial broadcast and sharing in detail about the hole on the radio, he didn't anticipate that he would find his entrance blocked upon returning to his property on that day. However, it wasn't blocked by regular people, but by the US military. Yes, the government had heard about the hole and they wanted to explore it themselves. After the Friday night show, Mel started noticing some helicopter activity around the property. This went on for a few days, given that people, including the government, wanted to see the hole for themselves. According to Mel, the hole affected the environment around it. For some reason, animals avoided it, but plants thrived. Furthermore, radios were acting strangely when they came close to the hole. Whenever a radio was brought near the hole, it immediately started making static noise. And even if it tried to be tuned, it was of no use. However, there were times when the radio would pick up a signal, but it seemed to be coming from somewhere else. Mel recalled that one day, as he was just listening to the radio at his house, it started playing what he described as old-time music. When he tried to change the channel, he ended up tuning into a baseball game. The first thought that crossed his mind was that it was just the first baserman. However, upon listening keenly, he realized this was not a game being played. In fact, it was a game that had been played in 1967, which was 30 years ago. Everything about this hole was just off. There were some unexplainable things that were going on around the hole that could not be explained, not even by scientists. But what else happened as a result of this hole? And did Mel eventually find out the mysteries that lie with the hole? Keep watching to find out for yourself. Before finding out if there was anything else that was off about the hole, let's go back to the night of the call with Art and Mel. That night, the call went on for about an hour, this was a full hour of Mel just explaining his thoughts about the hole and what he thought it was all about. And so, after the call, Mel naturally went back home. But upon getting home, he found a roadblock that was being manned by armed military soldiers. When he looked around, he also saw signs of heavy machinery being brought in. When he asked what all this was about, he was told that they were all here because of a plane crash that had happened on the property. This did not sit right with Mel, or anyone else for that matter, because there were no reports or sightings of fire or smoke. Even though he was the one who shared the news about the hole, and even though it was somehow on his property, Mel is denied access until a complete investigation of the supposed crash is done. Whenever he requested to speak to the person in charge, a man in civilian clothes approached him and informed him that the land might no longer be his. And as a way to threaten Mel to leave completely, the man claimed that they would find a drug lab on the property if he doesn't comply. Angered by the man's boldness to just take away his property, Mel threatened him by saying that he would go to the press and talk. And the man in charge, thinking Mel was just bluffing, told him to go ahead since no one would believe his words. What the man didn't know was that Art Bell and his audience would believe Mel, given that he had already told them about the whole. A few days later, Mel received a phone call from Art, who wanted an update on the situation. It was during this call that Mel revealed information that would have everyone more interested and completely terrified at the same time. Mel claimed that a neighbour saw what seemed to be a dark beam coming from the hole, piercing through the clouds. However, it is important to note that Mel was not the one who witnessed this. Art Bell and other curious listeners started stating some facts about the area, claiming that this area of Washington was a hub for UFO sightings, disappearances and other worldly occurrences. There were even those who claimed that there were a lot of paranormal happenings around the area. Just as these claims were coming in, there were also those who came up with theories to support them. One such theory that listeners raised was that the hole might be on the ley line, 
They claimed that this hole was some sort of portal to another dimension, or maybe even through time. They further explained that anything tossed in there just vanished and possibly accumulated in a mysterious pile in another dimension. You know, basically a heap of garbage made of old appliances and unfortunate animals. Another caller once raised the theory that this might be a tunnel to the hollow earth. You know, like a subway going through the middle of the earth. All sorts of theories were brought up about the hole, where it led, or what exactly it was. However, sadly enough, none of these theories could actually be confirmed by anyone. Callers on Art Bell's show would talk about their ideas, and they would all just discuss them in length. Out of curiosity, Art Bell went to investigate the property to see the hole for himself. However, just like Mel himself, he couldn't make it to the point where the hole was. Since he still wanted some answers, he decided that it was best to ask some locals about the hole. This was the only way he could gather more information about the hole. It was during this quest that an elderly neighbour revealed something a bit interesting about the hole. The neighbour claimed that a long time ago, there used to be some stone columns around the hole. This was very interesting information, given that it might have signified something. However, this information proved to be a dead end. When Mel went to the show to talk about the weird hole, he received immense support from people, most of whom were interested in the hole. On the other hand, there were those who were very much against his confessions, saying that it was a terrible idea. Most of these claimed that the government might be listening, and true to their words, the government was listening, and they got to the hole before Mel could even go back home. As the show ended, Mel promised to return with an update on the hole and any new information he might have learned. But unfortunately, on the day that he was supposed to give an update, he was a no-show. Furthermore, even when his house was called, he never picked up. But what could have happened to him in such a short time? Worried about his well-being, the television crew decided to go up to Ellensburg to find out what happened to Mel. But upon getting there, they were met with something so confusing that it made no sense. There was no hole where Mel had explained it. Not only that, but when they looked around, they found lots of military blueprints and intel that greatly suggested the presence of the military. It was clear that they were either here or they were still there. All that ended there until new information came to light three years later. Three years later, Mel came forward and claimed that he was offered about $3 million annually to lease his property. And of course, it goes without saying that he was leasing it to the government and they wanted to keep this under wraps. On that note, there was a huge catch to this deal. Mel had to sign a non-disclosure agreement, pack his stuff and leave the country immediately. And he was not only leaving the country, but he was never to return to the country under any circumstances. Without hesitating, Mel took the offer and left the country, setting up his life in Australia. However, unlike agreed on the non-disclosure agreement, he still returned to the country, but for a valid reason. You see, when he was leaving the country, he had to leave his family behind. This means leaving his wife and children behind and going away forever. That was too much to handle. So, two years after leaving the country, he started missing his family. And because of that, he decided to sneak back into the States just to see his family. Initially, he was warned against doing something as stupid as this. However, because of the love he had for his family, he still did it anyway. During his visit, Mel ended up doing something a bit stupid, which changed a lot of things. While in the States, he decided that it was best to call Art. During the call, he told Art Bell that he would spill the beans on the radio. However, he was a no-show on the day he was supposed to appear on air. But how is that possible? What could have possibly happened to him? According to Mel's recollection, on the day he was supposed to be on air, he was boarding a bus to visit his nephew. However, as they are on the road, an altercation breaks out, which ends up with the police being called. Eventually, everyone was questioned and they shuffled into a different bus. It was at this point that life decided to throw a curveball at Mel because shortly after boarding the bus, he blacked out. The next thing that Mel remembers is waking up in San Francisco. And upon asking around, he learned that it had been 12 days since he was last conscious. 
but the details become even stranger. Mel remembers waking up in an alleyway without his wallet or keys. He also claimed that his arm was throbbing with pain, and upon inspecting himself, he noticed that he had needle holes and tape marks from an IV. As he is regaining his consciousness and his senses start reconnecting the dots, he tastes blood in his mouth. It is at this point that he discovers that his back teeth have been removed, but that's not all for Mel's story. It seems as though, from here, his life takes nothing but a downward spiral. Even before he could get his life together and figure out where he was or what to do, he seemed to have some legal problems. For some reason, he faces charges for illegal construction, power lines, septic tanks and paved roads. However, it is important to note that Mel did not put that there. In fact, his property belonged to the government for the two years that he was not even in the country. But despite all that, Mel ends up losing everything. As if that was not enough torture for Mel, about two days after he made the call to Art claiming that he would spill the beans, his bank account was emptied. It seemed as though the government was determined to ruin his life and make sure that he never talked about anything that happened. But they were never really successful because we still learned about them. At this point, a lot of people would call in claiming that it was all a hoax. However, Art Bell, who was known as the master of tales, decides to let Mel tell his story. On the other hand, to make sure everything that was going on was known, Art hinted that a TV crew had gone to explore the area, but there were no signs of the elusive hole. Furthermore, they claimed to have found signs of military activity. And to add a dash of intrigue, the no-fly zone was, for some reason, expanded to cover the same territory. At the time, if you were to look at the maps from Terra Server, the pre-Google Earth mapping site, you would have seen an entire area that was blacked out. This is a detail that has checked out to date. As much as there were people who believed what Mel was claiming about the hole, there were those who expressed their doubts. These people claimed that Mel might have stumbled upon the blacked out area on the map and claimed that it was his property. However, Terra Server was launched about six months after Mel's first call, so there was no way he couldn't have known. However, there is a twist to this entire story which was quite unexpected. There was a Native American tribe that contacted Mel, inviting him to Nevada. They claimed that they wanted him to assist in their research on another bottomless hole, just like the one he had claimed to see. The people guided him there, and even though he didn't go all the way up, there were discussions that involved Native Americans, the Bosque and the Pit. The consensus between them was that everything is as it should be. They needed reassurance that Mel was not actually from CNN, the FBI or the CIA. After all, these are always the usual suspects, always wanting to get somewhere they are not supposed to be. After all that, Mel makes it to the hole and has a first-hand look, and at this point, everyone probably has the same burning question. What on earth was down there? For the second hole, it wasn't on the Indian reservation. In fact, it was on public land used by the Bosques, an ethnic group hailing from the region between France and Spain. The Bosques settled in the US, more specifically in Nevada, in the mid-1800s, and since then, they have been using this land for sheep herding. According to their legend, this hole has been here for more than 200 years and was considered sacred. However, this hole was completely different from the one Mel discovered. Unlike Mel's hole, this one had a metal collar in lining that stretched as far as the eye could see. But it gets even more peculiar. This hole had some sort of warm radiation coming from it there was some sort of heat all around it due to this radiation. In addition to that, the metal inline was not just any regular metal. When Mel accidentally dropped a tool on it, it made no sound. There were not even any vibrations. It was just total silence. This piqued Mel's interest, and together with the Bosque, they began experimenting with the hole. They started by lowering a bucket of ice down the hole for about 1,000 feet, they made sure to keep some ice at the top for control, so when the ice on the surface melted, they pulled up the one in the bucket. But to their amazement, the ice had not melted in any way. But that's not all. Even more surprising is the fact that it was no longer cold to the touch and remained dry. In fact, it had a texture like that of large pieces of salt. 
Out of curiosity, they tried to melt the ice over an open flame. And instead of melting, it caught fire and actually continued to burn for a couple of months. After a couple more experiments with ice, one of the Bosques volunteered to go down the hole. But after unanimously agreeing that it was too dangerous, they all agreed to send a sheep down there. The outcome? Well, let's just say it wasn't that pleasant. They lowered the crate containing the sheep to about 1,000 feet before coming to an abrupt stop. The sheep was left there for about 30 minutes, after which it was brought to the surface. At first glance, it seemed fine, but after a bit of investigation, it was discovered to be lifeless. The moment they did an autopsy on the sheep, it seemed as though the sheep had been cooked from the inside out. However, the most striking feature was the colossal tumour that dominated the sheep's body cavity. However, it turned out that the tumour was actually some sort of fetal seal. Nothing about this was normal, given that the seal was attached to the tumour by an umbilical cord and had the eyes of a human. Thanks for watching and make sure you click on the next video for more intriguing stories. I'll see you there.